Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining the ACA Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective for this Tuesday, May 11th. We're excited to have everybody with us. I am Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services at the Arizona Commerce Authority. We enjoy starting these boot camp sessions with a thank you to our partners. We could not do these boot camps without all of our partners. Uh, this is just a sample list of, of some of the partners that we have uh, helping with the boot camp. Uh, we've got over well over 100 different partners that are take their time, their effort, uh, their expertise, and share that with you as the experts on these boot camp series. So the Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective is designed to help small businesses work through the COVID crisis and return stronger than ever. It is a statewide initiative and supported by our community partners. And it's not only a boot camp, but it is the Resource Collective and an unintended consequence of doing all these boot camps is we have created a massive content library. So the ACA Small Business, Arizona Small Business Bootcamp website is a great website for you to favorite. On this website, you will find the upcoming sessions. You most likely went to this page to register for today's sessions. As well, you'll find a link to the resource collective. And then down at the bottom of the page, you'll find our archive. And we record every session and we post the recording and the slide decks and any other materials that the presenter wants us to share. And we post that on that in that archive. And that archive has created this content library. And we have over 140 different sessions recorded and posted on the, in the content library, uh, making it a very deep collection of expert guidance from experts throughout their fields, uh, from CEOs to trainers to government people to SBA specialists with PPP and accountants and others all kinds of great information covering every different topic uh, that a small business owner runs into throughout their career. The Resource Collective page has tools and guides and resources provided by our community partners. This is just a sample list of some of those guides and resources. You can see that we touch on restaurants, retail, construction, barbershops, cosmetologists, Etc. cetera, there's a lot of great information in the resources and guides on the, on the resource collective. Additionally, the Arizona Commerce Authority set up the COVID-19 Arizona Business Resources website at the start of COVID. And this is to help businesses throughout Arizona stay informed on business resources, business guidance, funding and financial programs, and all the information that can help navigate through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this is another great website that we, uh, we update it often with the, the newest information that comes out on the different federal, state, and local programs. And some of the programs that the ACA has to help support small businesses are small business services, um, where we host the, the small business boot camp. We can help with navigating the with the SBA or the Small Business Development Centers or SCORE or other no-cost business counseling programs. We can help direct you to the local banking contacts if you're needing that and share the latest developments. Additionally, our workforce division can work with employers that are looking to hire new employees or upskill your existing employee base. They have programs to help with both of those. And then our Arizona MEP, our Manufacturing Extension Partnership, is there to help with small to medium-sized manufacturers throughout Arizona who have worked through COVID, their COVID needs and their growth plans and are a great resource. And our team is nationally recognized within the MEP program across the country. Additionally, we have our small business checklist. Uh, many people are looking to start a small business on their own right now, um, break away from their corporate jobs and to help people start a small business um, or expand an existing business and the new product lines, we have our small business checklist. And it's an online interactive tool that helps people understand the commonly requested licensing, registration, and compliance needs at the local, state, and federal level. Uh, it is a great resource. Uh, you can find that at azcommerce.com forward slash small biz. And the final website I want to talk about is the state's COVID-19 information and resource page, arizonatogether.org. 
So with that, I want to look at some updates. So we've got a number of things happening uh, in the ecosystem. First, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund uh, application is open. Um, I have a couple links on there that uh, we will share these links in the chat so you don't have to try to write them down real fast. But uh, the application is open. We just got a note yesterday evening that uh, the SBA has started funding those. They funded the first group of 16,000 businesses. Um, and I believe the average grant in the, uh, the 16,000 was $125,000 approximately. Um, so we're starting to see those funds roll out. The nice thing is the first few weeks was designed for uh, historically disadvantaged areas and businesses um, in that group. So the smaller restaurants can access the funds before the larger restaurants uh, get larger amounts. So uh, that is open and currently ongoing. We also received some information last week about the PPP funds are exhausted except for PPP loans through uh, community development or community financial institutions. Um, most of those are CDFIs, community development finance institutions. Um, we got a link to the business journal information there. Um, so if you're still looking to try to get a PPP loan and you're working with a large lender, you may need to switch that over. There's a little bit of time left. If you have questions on that, you can contact us directly and we can guide you to those resources or you can reach out to your local SBDC. Small Business Development Center and work with one of their analysts to find the CDFIs that can help you with those loans. I also wanna make note that the Local First We Rise Accelerator application window has opened. Uh, they are accepting applications for the next We Rise Accelerator. And then just a, a business note, just a reminder that the tax deadline is May 17th. It was extended a bit, but if that date is coming up very quickly, so. Don't forget to get your taxes done uh, by that deadline um, or your extensions in so you don't have to pay any extra penalties. So with that, I want to look at uh, some upcoming sessions. So today we have marketing to the right customer. This Thursday, our session is uh, Grow with Google, how to reach customers online with Google. And that is a slightly different session. Uh, we're using Google's platform for that. Um, and so the registration is slightly different for that, sec that session, but please sign up for it. We are uh, co-hosting it with uh, Google and a couple other uh, community partners. So we're excited to have that one as part of our bootcamp. That one will not be recorded. We cannot record that one. So it, you need to be on it live uh, to access that information. And then next week on Tuesday, we have a great session on how to motivate and incentivize employees with um, Brian Burt from Snell and Wilmer. Uh, he's been with us before and this is a new presentation that he's sharing. And then on Thursday, May 20th, kicks off a, a four week series of standalone sessions by the SBDC, but all related to small business finances. And we're starting off with bookkeeping basics. So we're really excited for the, those four weeks of uh, financial webinars in our boot camp on Thursdays. Um, so we've got a great lineup over the next two weeks. We hope to see you on uh, more of them. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Monique. Today we have Monique James, Master Content Strategist uh, with Renegade Creative Media Group. And uh, so Monique, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn it over to you. All right, I'm going to jump right in to the slides. Good morning, everybody. Thank you to Arizona Commerce Authority for allowing me to be here with all of you fabulous people that are I already see in the chat. I saw some good mornings already. So what I would love to do just to kind of shift the energy a little bit is have you all that are tuning in live, drop in the chat where you're tuning in from, what city, or region of Arizona are you tuning in from? I'm just curious because I am in Sierra Vista and yes, it's a real place. It's south of Tucson, we're here, okay? But I'm just curious. So drop in the chat, I see Peoria, I see Scottsdale, Tucson, okay? I see uh, Chandler, Marana, I saw a Mesa, Casa Grande. Yes, surprise, Phoenix. I'm so, this is so, this is, this is just amazing. Somebody's here from Nashville, really? 
Oro Valley Lakeside. Yes, 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 yes. I'm I'm excited to be here with you all this morning. And just so you know, let let me clear this up right now. I do not drink coffee. I literally wake up with this energy. And when I get to wake up and talk about what we're going to talk about today, I get even more excited. So just bear with me. Uh, Lisa's already dropped in the chat. If you have questions, we I will be taking questions during this conversation. That's what this is. This is a conversation. I have an expectation that you all will ask your questions to give us the opportunity to discuss and share and do whatever it is that we have the time to do. So let's jump into this conversation. So drop a one in the chat if you identify with any of these phrases on this slide. You may have said to yourself or thought to yourself or you wrote it in your journal or you were, were having a vent session with the business bestie, you said, I don't know. I know my ideal customers, but I just don't know how to find them. Or you've said, I'm just getting started building this business and I have no idea who my target client is. Or you've said, I'm struggling with knowing what to say in my marketing to attract my customers. Or I just feel like I'm wasting my time on social media because I'm not getting results. A one in the chat if you have if you resonate with any of these phrases and I see some ones. So I want you to know that you're in the right place. During this conversation, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to talk about a process that you can use to get clear on the right customer for your product so that you can focus your marketing on those people and ignore everybody else. We want to direct our attention to the people that our product best serves so that we don't have to be concerned about the other people. Once we're clear on that, we can sustain ourselves and sustain our marketing for the marathon that this is. So like I said, this is an interactive workshop. It's, it's a conversation. Drop your questions in the Q&A section, uh, your comments, takeaways in the chat. I would love to know for those of you that are already doing online marketing, what channels are you using? What platforms are you using? What methods? If you're already doing some form of online marketing, if it's social media, I would love to know what channels you're using. If you're using email marketing, drop that in the chat. If you're doing video, drop that in the chat with the platform. I'm just curious, I would love to know because in order to create the results that you want in your business, you need to understand your customer. Everything that you will do in your marketing centers around the right customer. So I have one job today, just one. My job today is to support you with the information you need so that you can identify the right customer for your product and you can focus your marketing on them. So let me jump in the chat to see, okay, I'm seeing Facebook, Instagram, email, Instagram and Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, yes, TikTok, email and social, social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, email. yes. So you all are doing, you, you're doing the online marketing already. So what we're gonna talk about today is how to refine the person that you're targeting so that when you're using these platforms, you will know exactly how to reach those people. So who am I? My name is Monique James and I am a master content strategist. And basically what that means is I've been using teaching content marketing on some level for at least 10 years. I first started, I stumbled into this content marketing space after starting my very first business back in 2010. Um, and all I had was Facebook. And these are, this is, these are the glory days where everybody that liked your Facebook page always saw everything you posted. It was, it was phenomenal, okay? There was no Facebook ads, that wasn't a thing. It was great. And I knew that in order to get people to be interested in what I was offering, I was an event planner at the time, and to want to consider me to hire to host their events, I needed to show them what I knew. I needed to show my expertise. I needed to let them know how much I knew about what it was that I did. So I started offering helpful tips and information and different things. That was my start. That was my entry into content marketing. 
I believe content is the core ingredient to every form of marketing that you will ever do for your business. It doesn't matter if you're paying for radio ads or you're using social media or you're doing email or you're doing LinkedIn. It doesn't matter what it is that you're doing. You need to know what you're going to say in those messages. That's content. So your, the, you, your job as a marketer, as the leader of your business, is to use your content in a way that allows your customers to self-identify and to know that they need to choose you. That's the goal. That's the whole goal. You sell what you sell because you already know the impact that it will create in the world. You sell what you sell because you already know the transformations that your product will create in the lives of your customers, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be selling it. You know that your thing is needed in the world. So it's your job to then create the content that helps them recognize that they want it. And that starts with knowing who your person is. So content has done some amazing things for me. It has helped me create opportunities and take advantage of opportunities that I didn't even plan for. So these are just a few images that represent that. So you see me uh, in the top left teaching a class at Cochise College in a partnership with the SBDC. Top right is me teaching a workshop during the 10 West uh, Impact Festival in Tucson in 2019. Bottom left is me with a uh, Super Bowl Hall of Famer Will Shields, and he let me put a super ring on y'all, Super Bowl ring on. Um, and bottom right is me interviewing Jack Canfield and his partner, Patty Aubrey. It was my content that got me into these rooms because I knew who the person was I was targeting and was, we, was able to create opportunities or to exploit, leverage opportunities to get into these rooms purely from my content. <clears throat> and I wanna help you do the same thing. Your marketing works when it's focused on the right customer. Oftentimes we will try new things. We, you know, everybody's saying I need to be on TikTok. Everybody's saying I need to be here, there or everywhere. We try new things, but, and we assume that the new things don't work, but, we don't give ourselves an opportunity to discover or to explore if we're using the new tools in the right way. Are we focused on the right customer? Can you all see the slides? Let me know, drop in the chat, yes, or, or let me know if you can see the slides. Okay. Yeah, I can Gab see them on me. Okay, perfect. Gabriella, I would, oh, okay, Robert's got you. Thanks. Thank you, Robert. Um, so your marketing works when you're focused on the right customer, period. If you know the person that you're targeting, and you know where they're hanging out, and you know what they would want to hear, then you get to shape your marketing in the way that's going to attract them. You will be like the, the flame that attracts all the moths. That's what you want. That is the goal. Because when you're focused on the wrong person, then you feel like you're wasting time, and you, be, you get frustrated, and you get confused, and you get overwhelmed. That's difficult on top of all of the work that you're already doing in your business. So let's talk about how much you know about your ideal customer. So I would love to see in the chat, those of you that already have an idea of who your ideal customer is, your target client, whatever you call them. I like to call them the intended customer. Who is your person? Do you know their age? Do you, what do you know about them? What do you know about that person? How much do you know? Your customer, your potential customer could be in this workshop right now. So if you know something, even if it's a few facts about them, drop it in the chat. We're gonna be breaking down how to get clear on that person or those people because you may have more than one. So your person, your person, you ideally, you would want to know a few things, a few facts about that person, probably more than a few. By the time we're done, you're going to know more than a few. And I like to break down those facts in two categories, into groups. So the first is the what. What's their name? What's their age range? 
What about gender, race or ethnicity? Does that matter? What do they do for a living? What's their income? What's their family status? What are their hobbies? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why do I care about what their hobbies are? Or how does their family status re relate to how I'm able to target them with my marketing? You want to know the what at, the, at, at a minimum, because these are all of the things that pull or that capture their attention outside of their interactions with your business. If your, your ideal customer, your intended customer is a single parent and you want to sell them a high-end product or a high-ticket product, you need to recognize that they're a single parent because they probably have financial obligations to their children or to their household. And those obligations impact their decision-making when you're presenting your product. You want to know what their income status is like. Because if you sell a high ticket offer, you wanna make sure you're targeting the person who can actually afford to pay you for what you're selling. You wanna know their hobbies so that you can insert yourself into other conversations that they're having online. So that's the what. First piece, I'm gonna, I'm, I see some comments in the chat. Great, escrow title companies in Metro Phoenix area, real estate agents in Metro Phoenix. That's great. Uh, let's see, look for young parents with children five to 14, guessing their 28 to 48 income of 80K plus. Good, you all have a really good, those are great starting points. We're gonna dig deeper during this, during this conversation. We talked about the what, let's talk about the why. Let's talk about the fears, the aspirations, the motivations, or even the personality type that shape their decisions. We as business owners, we sometimes forget what it's like to be a customer, right? We forget, and it's it's okay, we all do it. We forget that we probably also have items saved in our cart that we know we need to buy, but we're just not ready to buy them yet for whatever reason. We got distracted, our spouse came in and asked how to find something, our kids came in, something else happened. There were other things that were involved in that decision-making process, those things caused us to delay making the purchase. Your intended customers are also experiencing other things, other variables that are delaying them from making the decision that you, as the provider of the transformation, you know they need it, but you want to be empathetic to the other situations, the other variables that might be causing them to delay making the decision. So think about your intended customer. What fears or aspirations could, they, could, they, could be at play that would either delay them from, from taking action or inspire them to take action faster? What motivates them? I like to use the example when we're talking about the why of a Tesla. So we, we, the way that if you were selling a Tesla, you would talk to a person who would perhaps be interested in reducing their carbon footprint in one way during that buying conversation, right? You're going to talk about the fact that it's an electric car and the fact that you're reducing their, they're reducing their carbon footprint. And the, maybe you'll talk about the efficiency and, you know, uh, increased mileage per charge or things like that. At the same time, the person who is interested purely in status and in being perceived as a success, the way that you talk to them during the buying conversation is going to be extremely different. That is why you knowing their motivations and their fears and their core values matter because you get to create conversations that will be irresistible to them. They won't be able to ignore what you're saying because you're speaking the things that are floating around in their hearts and heads all day long. And then they, and because you're speaking what they're not even acknowledging is true for them, they won't be able to ignore you and go choose somebody else. 
So do any of you listening to this, listening to what I'm saying right now, are you starting to think about the things that might be motivating? What would motivate your intended customer to say yes? And what fear would cause them to say no? Because when you know what motivates them to say yes, that's what you'll include in your content, in your marketing. And when you know what would cause them to say no, you can prepare your responses when those no's happen. One of my first jobs as a, as a teenager was a telemarketing place. This was, this was literally a thousand years ago. So we were selling uh, like call waiting services for a local telephone company. And I remember in the two week training before we got out on the floor, we had, they gave us scripts and a part of those scripts required us to overcome two no's before we could allow, before we could end the call with the, with the person. We had, to, we had to read a script, they would say no, then we would say this, then they would say no, then we could say, okay, thank you and hang up the phone. When you can anticipate the no, you then are not knocked off of your game you then can plan ahead. And when you're building out your marketing campaigns, you can include all of the reasons that you already know they would be telling themselves that would keep them from saying yes to you. And you can disarm those objections ahead of time, allowing you to be more efficient with your marketing, allowing you to increase your conversions with your marketing, allowing you to attract even more people who will be interested in buying what you have to sell. So that's the why. The third piece of the who is your person equation is the how. So when we talk about the online marketing space and you all listed several platforms that you're already using, with, with your intended customer in mind, think about how they prefer to receive and or process information. Because when you know what they prefer, you match your marketing to their preferences. It doesn't matter if you are most comfortable writing and you would prefer to do written forms of marketing all day long. If your intended customer prefers video and they're spending all day on YouTube, but you have no marketing footprint there, how likely are you to reach them? How likely are they to see your marketing content if you don't match their preferences for input? Because when we're talking about the online space, there are so many options out there, a ton of options, overwhelming number of options. And instead of obsessing or driving yourself crazy trying to think about or figure out what, what platforms are best, when you know who your person is, that's how you determine what platforms are best. The platforms that will help you reach your person. If your person reads the newspaper and that's their only method of receiving information, you could spend all every waking minute on Facebook and you will never reach them. But if you don't know them, then you won't know where they're spending their time. You won't know how they're receiving and processing information. That's the key. That's why you want to be so super focused on who your person is. Because when you know who your person is, your marketing can do three things. You can aim your marketing at their what, meaning their age range, their gender, their ethnicity, their occupation, family status. You can use your marketing to show that you understand their why, that you get what their challenges are, that you understand what fears and motivations they might have. And when it's delivered in the form of their how, they can't ignore you. <laughs> this is why I love talking about this. This is why I love having these conversations. You want your indebted customer to engage with your marketing and think, oh my God, 
how did Garth know that about me? Oh my goodness, they are speaking my language. I didn't know I had this struggle until they said it. That's what you want. That's what you want. You want to focus on their what, show that you understand their why, and deliver it in the form of their how. You want to match their vibe. Because our marketing, contrary to what we would love to believe, our marketing is not going to change the behaviors of our intended customers if we can't first capture their attention. And you won't be able to capture their attention if you're not speaking their language. And if you're not on the platforms where they're already spending their time. So Garth, I see your question. I'm coming to you in a second. Let's talk about how much information you might want to consider trying to figure out about your intended customer. This is an example of a client avatar that my company does for my internal brands and we do this for clients. So take a look at Roland. Roland is, Roland could be Caucasian, he could be Hispanic, he could be African-American. In this case, it doesn't even matter. Roland is between the ages of 48 to 55. And he's married, he has two college age children. His spouse works full-time outside the home. He's a marketing executive at his day job, but he wants his passion to be his full-time gig. So we could say that's the what information. The middle section, the one through 15, might be his why information. And then the bottom section, his deepest desires, these, this is the stuff that Roland doesn't dare share with anybody that he knows. So who is looking at Roland and either identifies with Roland or is thinking, how the heck do I figure this out from my own business? How can I get this clear? How can I learn even five additional pieces of information about my intended customer, my ideal customer, my target client? Who here is reading this and thinking, I would like to know where to begin? Anybody in the chat, drop it in the chat. Say me in the chat. I see Garth's question. Garth and James have the same question. <laughs> perfect. You, this is perfect. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm, I want you to pull out your notebook and a pen if you didn't already have it out. I am going to give you two sources to go look because so much of this customer discovery uh, process, part of it is research and the other part of it is imagination. And I challenge you, especially those of you that are a lot like me and you're like, I don't have time for imagination in this. Like, this is serious business. I don't have time to imagine. Here's why you want to add the imagination piece into it. Because you want to create the type of content and create the type of marketing that will attract the people that you want to work with, not just anybody. I would imagine you didn't start your business for your business to feel like a job. You started your business perhaps to have freedom, more freedom over your time, more freedom over the type of conversations that you engage in, more freedom over everything, right? So you want to give yourself the space to design the type of client you want to serve. Because when you have that picture of that person in mind, your marketing will match them. This is why the core values piece is, is important is in, and is included in that customer discovery. Because if your business, if you as the leader of your business values integrity and honesty, would you want to work with the client who doesn't? Probably not. So you get to decide the type of person you want to serve and you're not losing anything. You're making room for all of those people who are like Roland, who identify with these pieces of information to say, you are speaking to me. So the first source, the first data source that you're gonna to go to 
is Amazon. And I know you, some of you might have feelings about Amazon, it's fine. We're not shopping, we're doing research. So you're gonna to go to Amazon and you're gonna look up books or a product related to what it is that you sell. You're gonna think about the person who would buy your product, what would they also be buying on Amazon that's similar to what you sell? I'm gonna go back through the chat because I wanna give you all a clear example of what this is looking like. Let's see. So Luz works with real estate agents in Metro Phoenix. So think about something that a real estate agent in Metro Phoenix might be buying or researching on Amazon that's related to your service or to your product. What would they be looking for? Maybe they might be looking for um, books, educational books. That real estate agent might be looking for information to help expand their own knowledge. They might be looking for uh, information about how to work with clients or how to design their business. Once you have an idea of what that person would be looking for, you're going to look in the comments or the reviews of those products to find out what people are saying about that product. That's gonna to start to give you real words from real people. The people that rated that product five stars, what did they love about it? The people that rated that product one or two stars, what did they hate about it? Those are, that's gonna give you information about what you might wanna say in your marketing or gaps that you might want to design your product to meet. So that's the first research source. The second research source is YouTube. Again, with your intended customer in mind, what would they be searching on YouTube that would make them ideal to buy your product? What, what would they be looking up? What information, what videos would they be watching that would make them write for your product? And you're going to look in the comments and see what people are saying or engaging with. What are they complaining about? Are they saying, you're speaking to me. I have a kid. I have a college age student. I have a college age student. What are they saying? What information are they sharing? about their lives. The beautiful thing about the internet is people will freely share their information. The dangerous thing about the internet is people will freely share their information. For you as a marketer, that gives you an advantage. You don't have to set up focus groups and do surveys and, and beg your people to respond. You can go to the places where people are already sharing their family makeup, what types of car they drive, what type of gas they use in that car, what type, when do they go shopping for their kids for, for back to school? The information is out there. And you, with your intended customer in mind, are going to be able to filter and synthesize that information and build out a profile of your perfect customer. With that information, you, you're going to start to you're going to start to see that people like Roland don't want to feel like an employee in their own business. They're ready to be the CEO. So perhaps they're looking on Amazon for books about growing a business or hiring a team. Perhaps they're on YouTube watching Tony Robbins videos and commenting about how they want to start to take ownership of their own lives. You are the expert in what it is that you sell. You have a say in who gets to enjoy it. That's why this, this part, if I'm going to be honest, is really challenging for a lot of business owners because it's hard to say, well, I'm not going to work with XYZ type of people. I am here to encourage you and challenge you that you have to choose to not work with certain types of people. Because if your marketing 
is blanket. And if it's not specific, then it's not effective at all. You want to be clear on the, that person or those people, because some of you may have more than one person. Some of you may have more than one target client, and that's fine. That's totally fine. You want to know as much information as you can about every type, every profile. So when you're building out your marketing campaigns, you could say, first quarter, Q1, we want to target this client profile. So we're going to build out our marketing purely focused on that person. And then in Q2, we're going to shift and we're going to target this particular client. So we're going to build out campaigns to focus on that person. So that the per that person, when they see your marketing, they think this is the best choice for me. The best choice, not one of many choices, but it's the best choice. This person understands me so well that I don't have a choice but to follow their social networks, send them a LinkedIn connection request, visit their website to read their blog, sign up for their newsletter, register for their webinars or free trainings, attend their events, buy their product, tell my friends about their product. That's what you want. That's what you want. So let's talk about, we, are, we have a couple minutes left. I wanna use this opportunity to talk about how you can make it real for your brand. So drop your questions in the Q&A. Let's talk about how you can take this concept and apply it specifically to your business. What products you might be searching on the two resources that I shared? What complementary products would you be looking at in order to start to pull that information so that you can start to build a profile of the person that you want to target with your content, with your marketing. Who's ha who has questions? Some of you also, and I didn't mention this, some of you also already have audiences. You already have people on your newsletter list. You already have followers on social media. Follow those people. Look at the groups that they might be in. Pay attention to what they say in their comments to you. Use their comments as opportunity to create conversations, to ask for more detail. I love asking my audience what TV shows they like to watch. Do you know why? Because if there's an overlap, if, there, if that TV show mentions something that I could use as an opportunity to create more marketing, I'm gonna do it. I like to know where they like to shop. Because if I like to shop at those same places or that brand does something that's interesting, I'm gonna use that as an opportunity to create conversations. Marketing is creating conversations. That's what you're doing. And you with a person, you as a person with something to sell, you wanna take advantage of every opportunity available to create conversations with your people. Because if you can't get them to engage in a conversation with you, you definitely can't expect that they'll, they'll want to buy the thing just because you're selling the thing. You wanna create as many doors as possible for them to engage with you, to comment, to tell you what's on their mind. One, because that's information. And two, because the nature of the online platforms is if you can get them hooked and you can get them engaged, then the platform will continue to show them your content. If they're engaging with your Facebook posts, Facebook is gonna keep showing them your content. If they're engaging with your Instagram posts, Instagram is gonna keep showing them your content. Same with LinkedIn, same with Twitter, same with TikTok. You have to first be able to capture their attention. And that's what your marketing does. It allows you to get them to the point of the purchase. 
but you can't do that if you can't capture their attention in the noisy online space. So who has questions? Questions, questions, questions. I'm looking in the q and I'm looking in the chat. I'm scrolling up. Gart said, this is great. Never thought of these places. That's great to hear, Gart. So listen, you all, don't overlook the resources that you already have available. And also think about your experiences as a consumer. Think about how you dilly dally over your own purchases. Your intended customers are doing the same thing. And because the online space is so noisy and there are so many alternatives out there, you want to be the brand, you want to be the business that shows a higher level of understanding because it's with that understanding that you'll be able to separate yourself from your competitors. It's with that empathy that you'll be able to create a stickiness with your company. They'll never leave you because you get them, because you understand them, because you identify with them. They'll be loyal to you because your marketing shows that you get it, that you get them. Your marketing shows that you understand. Your marketing doesn't show that you're only interested in a transaction. Now, of course, you are interested in a transaction, but you know that you there is a process that you have to be willing to engage in with the customer before they will get to the transaction and say yes. So if you're willing to invest your marketing in that process, when you get to the point that you're offering the product, they're ready. They're ready. That's what your marketing allows them to do. To get ready. To recognize that they're dealing with a challenge that, that is plaguing them, that's annoying them. To recognize that you are one of the people that have a solution. And then to recognize that they have no other choice but to choose you. You are the one that gets them the best. You are the one that understands them the most. You are the one that can help them in a way that nobody else can. You can do that with your marketing. And the beautiful thing about social media in particular is you can do this as often as you want. <laughs> you won't annoy anybody. You can, you can share messages on your Facebook page all day long without overwhelming your audience. You know why? Because Facebook is only going to show it to the people that are already engaging with it. And if they're engaging with it, that shows they're interested and they will probably want to consume more. And you can do that on the social networks in particular without spending any money. It's going to require some time because you're going to have to do some research. You're going to have to create those captions in a way that are going to be attractive to them. But for that investment, the sales that you want, the revenue that you want, I would argue that they're worth it. So if we don't have any questions, I don't see any other unanswered questions in the Q&A. So what you all are telling me is that I have done such a stupendous job at presenting this information that you all have no questions. All of your questions, concerns have been addressed. I will receive that compliment and run with it. So I think we still have a few more minutes. Roberts, correct me if I'm wrong. We, we do. We, we got a few minutes. We're always willing to give people time back. But uh, this has been a great presentation. So please, please ask your questions. Take advantage of Monique's time while we got her here. Um, I, I really like those ideas. I haven't thought about the Amazon and YouTube of, you know, searching for those complimentary items or similar things that your customer may be looking for and using that to, to research your, your clients. That was really cool. I was... I was making notes of that myself uh, for, for my side project that I do. Um, so that was really cool. So again, let's take advantage of Monique's time. Please uh, post up any questions you have in the Q&A. Uh, really appreciate everybody for their, their participation in the chats and the, the responses to her questions. That was really cool to see. And it was really exciting to see that we had a few people from out of state uh, joining us as well. So we got a question. We do have a question. Okay, what if there is no existing competitive businesses, an entire new service, any advice? 
if there is no competition, is there a market? That would be the first question I would ask. If there isn't, if there isn't already somebody offering it, be, be sure that there is a market for it. So you could still use those, those um, resources to go look, to see if there's something in the universe of this new service that already exists and you can borrow from, from those supplementary or those complementary um, industries and services. But I would be sure first that, that a market already exists before you dive in um, and start investing resources. You know, Monique, that, that's a great question that they asked. Um, I've got a good friend that's started and exited multiple companies. And one of the things he likes to say when he hears from people pitching, you know, investment stuff, uh, there's no competitors. There's always a competitor. <laughs> Somebody's using a service or product to try and do something. Yours may be completely new and unique, but somebody's using something to try, try and fill that need. And so you can, you need to find those products and then you can search the way Monique mentioned because they're using something, you know. Yeah. Um, you can look back at the iPod. There were MP3 players. There were music players that were digital. So the iPod wasn't new. It wasn't, they, they had no competitors. They just built a better mousetrap with their, with, you know, the app, with the iPod. So um, be mindful of that when you say, oh, there's no competitors. You, your clients are using something. And so there is something to use to research. I said, and I love, I love that you even said the iPod, Robert, because that's one that I like to talk about. I remember my very first iPod, it was pink, but it had the green screen. And I remember the, the marketing for that. What Apple said was a thousand songs in your pocket. So they knew going back to what we just talked about today, they understood that one of the challenges or one of the frustrations of their target customer was wanting to have access to all of their songs on the go. I was that person that had like CD books and kept them in my trunk all the time. So they recognized, they knew the lifestyle of the user for that product and they framed their marketing in a way that was going to like, oh my God, I can carry a hundred, a thousand songs in my pocket. I need that. That's why it's so important to, to be so clear on that person. Um, Gabriella says, a great question, Acute. What about services versus goods? For example, garage door company. How would one find an ideal customer beyond the customer having a garage? Maybe wanting a garage. Your what 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 else would the person who would come to that garage door company be looking for? They would be doing home renovation product projects, DIY projects. They might be looking, my garage door has the little spring thing has broken like three times. They, would, they might be looking for specific, uh, looking to solve specific problems related to what you're offering. And if you know what that is, that's gonna help you get to that person. Diane, my Instagram account is Monique James. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> it's, it's, it'll be, I think I have it in the slides, but Monique James, literally my first and last name on, uh, on Instagram. I would love to connect with you there. Any other questions? Anybody? Bueller? Anybody? You know what, Monique? We'll go ahead and, and wrap up, give the people a few more minutes to, between their next, you know, webinar or Zoom that they might have, hit the restroom, get to refill their coffee, whatever. But uh, we want to thank you for being on here. This was a fabulous presentation. Um, you know, we've done lots of marketing boot camps, but you brought some new stuff, which was awesome. That we haven't heard yet so so we really appreciate that loved your energy um so thank you very much uh, all the attendees thank you for being part of it and participating with monique and her questions and and your responses that was great to see um with that we will go ahead and wrap up we want to invite everybody to join us for our grow with google session on thursday morning 9 a.m um faith will be our aca host at that one i will be tied up with another presentation um, but, uh, we're excited to, to be here with you at each, each and every Tuesday and Thursday. So please join us on Thursday until then be safe. Uh, and we will see you then.
Uh, thank you again, Monique, and thank you all for attending. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.